we are pleased to welcome in yes, sir. Mitch Williams. Mitch, welcome to the What's I up? Couple. What's up, guys? First, what did you did you see Garrett Cole's press conference? No. So here it is. And you have okay. used spider attack while pitching. Um, I don't. I don't know. I I, I don't know if. Uh, <laughs> I don't know quite. I don't quite know how to answer that. To be honest. Um, I mean, <laughs> there are customs and practices that have been passed down from older players to younger players, from the last generation of players to this generation of players, and. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, I think there are some things that are certainly out of bounds in that regard. Mitch, right, what do you make of that? Yeah. Well, I've never believed that even using pine tar should be illegal. And I'll bring it down to one, one area. The only reason pitchers use pine tar is for what reason? Grip. To grip, grip. the baseball. Grip. Yep. So to be able to have grip on it. And I'll make this point every year till the day I die. Take the pine tar away from hitters, then you can bitch about pitchers using it. Until they take it away from hitters, they can't say anything about it. Because uh, well, it does not affect the integrity of the baseball. Okay, Mitch, let me ask you this. How commonplace, and what we're seeing is unprecedented pitching. Six no-hitters in the first six weeks of the season. Jacob deGrom has blown away Bob Gibson's 1.12, which was the standard of excellence of pitching in the major league. He has a 0.62. Uh, we're going to have more strikeouts than hits. We're going to have the lowest batting average ever in the history of baseball collectively when this season is over. Are, are, are all the pitchers using this goo or spider tack or whatever, or is this being blown blown out of proportion by Major League Baseball? What's going on? It's been blown out of proportion because they aren't hitting. They've done everything in the world in this game of baseball to skew it for the hitters. They built parks that are smaller. They've done everything. They won't let pitchers pitch inside anymore. Everything for the hitters. Now pitchers have found something that, hey, Okay, because we can grip our equipment, which is the baseball, like you can grip your equipment to bat, things are a little more even now. And what they're finding out, it ain't doesn't have anything to do with this spider tack. It has everything to do with the way they are teaching hitting at the big league level and everywhere on down now. Because that launch angle crap is just that. Crap. And that's it. Everybody's swinging for the fences. It's easy to get guys out now, isn't it, Mitch? Everything. You're exactly right. I wish I was pitching today. <laughs> <laughs> if they're not going to shorten up and put the ball in play, I didn't have anything to worry about. We had a we had a caller uh, last segment who said he played, what, junior college baseball, Rob? Yeah. He said at every level, as you get to the higher levels, each level, the baseball, the seams are a little Changes. bit lower. And that's why you need the grip, you know, at the major leagues, you need pine tar or whatever to help you grip it. Is that true? Oh, well, I know they use the diamond. They used to use the diamond baseball in college ball. Mm -hmm. They used the diamond, sometimes the Wilson A-10-10 in high school ball. Yes, those seams are more raised. But when you get to the big leagues, the seams have never been any different at any time in my career. I never held a baseball. I went, oh, this just feels different than last year. So do you, when, you, when you say you want to grip it, I mean, obviously you've grown up, you know, playing without using pine tar or whatever. Why is it so necessary to use something to have a, a better grip at the major league level? Do you, I don't know if you've thrown the ball – in April at Wrigley. Oh, when it's cold. Tell no, you that it's cold. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can promise you this. There ain't a hitter alive that wanted me thrown in April without any feel of the baseball. It's dangerous. It's flat out dangerous. Don't have the control. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think 50 Cent needed some pine tar when he threw that first pitch at uh, City Field. <laughs> well, I didn't see him throw it. Oh, my God. Mitch, when you get a chance, one please, of the lucky ones. you got to see this. He threw the ball almost to first base off the mound. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I Mitch, that's no big deal. This is what I want to get straight because I've heard some 
former pitchers and stuff talk about how they used, whether it was spider tack or pine tar or whatever, is the use of some type of substance for pitchers, is that commonplace in Major League Baseball? And it has been ever since you can remember. For as long as I can remember, there's always been some kind of, whether it was firm grip or whatever it might be. Or I've never even heard of spider tack, to be honest with you. Don't know, have any idea what brand it is. No idea. Right. But it's always been used. It's always, whenever I got to, if I was pitching in a game and I didn't have a good fastball, you think I wasn't going to go behind the mound and wet my fingers and get back up on the mound and throw a spitter? It's exactly what I did. Did, did you but, ever you go ahead, Mitch, I'm sorry. I, I never used any kind of tack. Okay. Nothing sticky. I used my spit and rosin was good enough for me. How about like guys like Gaylord Perry, whose mo was about he was putting a little uh, Vaseline or something on the ball. I was he made it to the Hall of Fame. Phil Negro got caught with Emery Board. You remember that on the mound? Yeah, Phil. No, Joe got caught with it. Oh, Joe Joe Negro. And the other one was. you remember Mike Scott who pitched for the Astros and the Mets? Oh, yeah. Uh, and he was scuffing the ball. You remember that? Me and Nolan Ryan were scuffing the ball. and big, It's commonplace. It's been done every year for as long as baseball has been played. So you I just think this – go ahead. Sorry. I pitched in a game with Dennis Eckersley one night. I went out there. I threw my first warm-up pitch. My fastball sunk. And I went, what the hell is going on here? Got the ball back. There was four big cuts across the horseshoe. That's how they did it. (laughs) So you think this is the uh, Major League Baseball using the pitchers as scapegoats for why these guys can't hit anymore? You're exactly right. That is the exact thing that is happening. They're teaching the wrong way to hit. I'm telling you, you watch the way these guys approach at bats, there is nothing. There is no strategy to their at bats. It's go up there and swing from your behind until you either hit the ball or strike out. That's how they approach it. And, there and, is no and, approach. And and this is the analytics, though. I mean, this is where we think Chris and I talk about this, Mitch. That the analytics have ruined are ruining sports. In the NBA, everybody's taking a three point shot, even though we we saw a game where they had a three on one break that they could have tied the game with a layup, and instead everybody ran to the three-point line, and, of course, they missed the three-pointer and lost the game. But we see in baseball now, uh, you know, guys don't get sent down to the minor leagues, Mitch, if you're batting under 200 with 150 strikeouts. Like, that, no, that nobody flinches. Is, no, is that, it, is the analytics killed the game like that? Absolutely. Well, it's I, – I think the fact that – so much money has been thrown around in this game. I mean, I just, I'm here in Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia, where they have Mike Kingery. The man was given a six year, I believe, $24 million contract before he ever played a day in the big leagues. Right. Bad business, bad scouting, and bad teaching is why hitting is where it is today. Are they teaching, has analytics, how has it affected pitchers? Like, are they teaching pitchers to do anything differently analytically, or it's just the same for pitchers? I have no idea. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what they're teaching pitchers because I don't see a whole lot. There are some guys that can pitch. I can tell you this. I haven't seen six pitchers that look like they could throw a no-hitter. They don't <laughs> that have the stuff to go out and throw a no-hitter. Right. How, how about- they, I just haven't seen them. How about Jacob DeGrom? I mean, he was he's always been a great pitcher for the Mets, but his ERA is 0.62, and, you know, people are now starting to say, is, is he really that great, or is, it, is he using something? Is it all right to be skeptical of it, or is it just that guys can't hit, and he's a great pitcher, so he's taking advantage of it? Exactly. Every time pitchers start dominating the game over the course of the season – they want to come up with a reason for it. Instead of it just being, okay, these guys are out there pitching. What I don't understand, if you're going to talk about grip, this is, I did this demonstration, I did a demo at 
MLB Network with Harold Reynolds, who to bitched and complained about pitchers using pine tar. So I did a demo where I went live into their studio, and I rubbed my fingers across a black pine tar rag, put them on the baseball, rubbed them all over the baseball, stuck the baseball up to the camera to see it. There isn't a mark on the baseball. The only way to affect the flight of a baseball is to affect the integrity of the cover of the baseball. If there's and nothing that's, for that's the wind, scuffing to or push. cutting, right? The scuffing or cutting of it. Scuffing or cutting. If you had a chunk of pine tar that happened to get stuck on the ball, that the wind could catch, yes, it would affect the integrity of the baseball. Dipping your hands in pine tar will not even leave a mark on a baseball, much less affect the integrity. It allows you to grip it. That's it. Mm. There it is. Good Mitch, stuff, man. Great stuff, man. We appreciate your time. Anytime, fellas. Y'all take care.